Greetings, dear brothers and sisters. Once again, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Once again, to Him and Him alone, be all the glory, praise and honor. And today is the 31st day, right Anna? Yes. 31st day of the 10th month. Today is the last day of this month. We are 2016 and I am once again here to help our 7-year-old daughter, Hannah. She got quite a few words and quite a few visions actually. So I'm trying to help her out. She, as the Lord has led her, she has drawn all the charts and the words and whatever the Lord has led her to. So let's start with the word of prayer, shall we, Hannah? Yes. Right. Heavenly Father, we come this day in your presence, in the name above every single name of our King Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray that we pray, Father, as Anna is about to convey your message to your appointed people. Please enlighten all of our hearts and minds with your Holy Spirit and please be her strength when she is weak. We pray for each and every viewer that may the Lord guide you through his Holy Spirit and help you to receive this message from our com coming King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in whose name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can go ahead. So on the fifth day of the 10th month of 2016, I heard Jesus say, I have given you my discernment, but if you do not use it, I will take it away. And the scripture we got for it was, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. And it's found in Psalm chapter 119, verse 66. And on the 11th day of the 10th month of 2016, Jesus said, I am with you. I will guide you. I will protect you. I will lift you up. And the scripture we got for it was, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. And it's found in James chapter 4, verse 10. And on the very same day, I heard Jesus say, I am coming quickly. Do not be afraid. You will be made ready. There is no more time. Get ready. And the verse we got, and the scripture we got was Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, and it says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. And on the 14th day of the 10th month of 2016, I heard Jesus say, Trust in me, I am with you, I will guide you, do not let evil befall you. And the scripture we got was 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And it says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And on the ninth, so those were the words. And the visions were on the ninth day of the 10th month of 2016. I saw Jesus standing with a white robe and his head and hair were golden and he had a golden scepter in his left hand and he said, I am the way, come through me and you will have no hard times. And on the very same day, I saw Jesus standing with a golden robe and then I came and bowed down and then he touched my head and then I stepped up got up and then Jesus took me and he led me to a place which I never saw before and there was a lake a small lake kind and there was a table on one side of the lake and there was a white sheet on that table and there was something written on it which was I love Jesus Jesus loves me and on and on the seventh day of the 10th month of 2016, I saw Jesus sitting on his throne and he was leaning forward. And I, and I was, I saw myself sitting at my table and I was writing something. And then Jesus thrust down his hand and golden drops fell from his hand. And then I took a new sheet and then I, wrote on that sheet Jesus loves me and he died for me so I don't have to sinning sin anymore so those were the visions and those were the visions and words and so today the message is that Jesus is coming very very soon and that he is even telling us 
to be ready and and meanwhile he gave us the discernment but it's our choice what we pick good or bad we need to use the discernment to do good and choose good over evil Discernment is this, when we get a word or vision or dream, then it should align with the Bible. Basically, we should be able to find a Bible verse for it. We can't find, if we can't find a verse, then that word or vision or dream is not from the Lord. But sometimes we need to discern like this. We should listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. For example, you drop something. You feel that you should pick it up. If you do pick it up, you listen to the Holy Spirit. This is discernment. Let's use it to choose good instead of evil. For the Bible says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's found in Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Also, we should not try to use our discernment through our natural mind that we think is good enough. The Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither... Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And it's found in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 through 9. The Lord led us to the parable of the wheat and tares. This tells us that we should be careful. As Jesus tells us that there will be weeds around for which we need to use our discernment that Jesus gave us so we don't fall in the trap of the weeds. So Jesus said that a man sowed good seed in his field and while he slept, an enemy of his came and sowed weed seeds in the field. And the man does not want to take out the weeds immediately because while uprooting, the servants might pluck out some wheat. And so... The man decides to save the weeds, and at harvest, he will say to the servants, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, and gather the wheat into my barn. And so the meaning is, Jesus puts the believers in the world, and then Satan comes and put un, puts unbelievers in the midst of believers. And Jesus does not want the angels to right away burn the believers, because if they accidentally pull out a wheat, it will be burnt. Jesus does not want that. There's a very important point there. And it's very amazing the love that Jesus has for the believers that even he won't, he doesn't want even one of the believers to perish. Jesus waits for the harvest time to happen. Then he, then the angels burn the unbelievers in hell, and Jesus takes the believers with him. And the Lord also led us to the parable of watchfulness. It tells us to be ready for the coming of Jesus. And this watchfulness is, there were two parables in there that Jesus said, and he said, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning and be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks they may open to him immediately and the result is the master will serve the men waiting for him jesus says blessed are those servants whom the master when he comes will find watching and the par second parable is if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have kept watch and not allowed his house to be broken into. Then Jesus, what Jesus ended with was, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So this is found in Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 40. And the parable of the wheat and tares is found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. So, now the coming, the Lord's coming is so near. We should realize how important it is to get ready now. Often we fail to realize how dangerous it is to be left on earth, 
behind on earth after the rapture. But how do we get ready? Actually, we don't get ready. God makes us ready, but we have to let God make us ready. There are three steps in our part of being ready. First, we need to ask God to help us be ready. Second, we need to read the word so that our faith grows because the Bible says in Luke 18, 8 that Jesus will look for faith when he comes. Third, we need to show the fruit of the Spirit, which, which, another thing, which is another thing that Jesus will look for. These things are what we, need, what we need to do to be ready. But how do we bear fruit? Jesus says in John 15, 5 that he is the vine and we are the branches. Also, Satan is the wind. If Satan blows us down, we can't bear fruit. Like if the wind blows a branch down, it can't bear fruit because it can't get any water. The water is the Holy Spirit. When the wind blows us down, we, can, we cannot get the flow of the Holy Spirit coming through Jesus, who is the vine. Then we can't bear the fruit of the Spirit. We need that flow of the Holy Spirit to bear fruit. But what keeps us on Jesus? The faith is the thing that holds Jesus and us together. If Jesus and if Satan blows out our faith, we fall off Jesus. And when we fall off Jesus, the flow of the Holy Spirit does not flow in us, which lets all the spiritual nutrition flow out of us. And we don't bear fruit. We become a dead branch and the bad things keep following. Finally, at the end, God will throw the dead branches into the fire, representing hell. That's why we need to have faith so we don't fall off Jesus. Because as soon as that happens, all the bad things start and we end up in hell. Every time the wind blows, the branches are shaken. This represents attacks from Satan. But that doesn't mean that the branch will fall off. We will, be, we will have attacks, but that should not let us fall off. The branches will be shaken, but that doesn't mean they will surely fall off the tree. That should not let us fall off. Of course, the wind will blow, but we should not fall off. That water is very important. We don't have the roots, so we can't get the water by ourselves. Jesus has the roots, so we need to be clinging on to Jesus. So from him, we can get the water to live. Also, reading the word is another very important thing. It gives us energy. Reading God's word is like the sun, which empowers us and helps us by increasing our faith, which keeps us on Jesus. When we lose the faith, we remove the thing which keeps us on Jesus and we fall off. And we don't bear the fruit. These are the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But when we become the branches, what are we supposed to do? We're not supposed to just hold on to Jesus, keep holding on to Jesus. Yes, we are supposed to do that. But we are supposed to help and encourage each other also. So we all can become strong in the Lord. We should not just become stronger and stronger yes god will make us stronger and stronger yes god will make us stronger and stronger but we should not boast about that and we should not only get stronger and stronger through the lord we should also help others and encourage others to get stronger in the lord but we should not boast about how strong we are in the lord because it's him who gave us that strength. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It doesn't say I can do all things, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus is the one who created us. He knows everything about us. He knows how to make things better for us. He knows how to do things for us he knows us because he is he is the one who created us if you create something you'll know everything about it like that jesus knows every single thing about us jesus knows every single thing that's why he knows how to help us that's why he can work miracles in us he knows what miracle we need and when we need that miracles 
miracle. He knows what amount of strength we need, and he knows when to give that amount of strength. He knows every single thing about us. There's not a single thing that Jesus doesn't know about the entire universe or us. He knows every single thing. Why? Because he created the whole universe. So he will know every single thing about it. We actually cannot even breathe without God. God is the one who created us. And if the creator doesn't exist, the creation won't exist either. We have not done anything to earn salvation. It's God's gift, the Bible says, for it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We are not to boast about what God has given us, and that verse is found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. We are to help each other to grow strong in the Lord, not to boast about how strong we are in the Lord. We are not, we are to help others become strong in the Lord. And also, we not only help others, we also have to do it ourselves. Just helping others and not doing it ourselves doesn't make sense. Or just doing it ourselves and not helping others doesn't make sense either. We have to do both. Or else Jesus doesn't like it. We have to encourage others and not boast about our strength we have in the Lord. That's the Lord's strength he gave us. It's not our strength. Thank you everybody for listening. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in abundance. In the holy, holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Anavi. Thank you. And thank you, dear brothers and sisters. Yes, yes, yes. Again, we hear the same thing. Jesus says there is no more time. There is no more time and there is no more time. There is no more time. But Anna points us to John 15, 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you are in me and I am in you, then only you can bear fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. That's the truth, dear brothers and sisters. We have to realize that we need to cling on to the vine and we need to bear fruit and only Jesus Christ can work it out. Jesus Christ is the only hope amidst of every single thing. And how do we get ready? And I try to tell us and we hope that you find this message really encouraging, dear brothers and sisters. More importantly, we hope that this message helps each one of us and in, yes that includes me and each one of us and my family that we need to grow stronger we need to this is the time to work out our salvation with trembling and fear the coming of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is any time he's going to come now we all know that this is the time we need to hold on to him this is the time we need to purify ourselves for him and him alone because Jesus Christ is our only hope and dear brothers and sisters, we once again will definitely encourage you. Please do take this message to the Lord and whatever the Lord lays on your heart. Please, if you would please get back to us with all your comments, suggestions, inputs. We greatly appreciate every single inputs of yours. And let's end with a word of prayer. Shall we, Anna? Yes. Lord, I praise you once again. I thank you and I glorify your name for the wonderful message and more importantly for the holy spirit you have poured out you have poured out on each one of us right this moment i thank you for warning us and telling us to be ready that you are coming very soon i thank you for all you've done in our lives i thank you for your gift of salvation i thank you for creating us so that we could praise you lord and right this moment i give you all the glory praise and honor lord jesus I thank you for all your warnings and I praise you, Lord, for saving us from the lake of fire, Lord Jesus. I pray, help us to hold on to you. Help us not to lose our faith, Lord Jesus. Help us not to boast about how strong we are in you, but help us to help each other to grow stronger and stronger in you so that we all can become strong disciples of you, Lord Jesus. In your holy name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, and God bless you all.